Hi, Peter Wood here again, Training Master at True North Marine. Uh, this presentation covers the Marine Radio Licence exam questions. In this presentation, we're going to provide the correct answers to the questions. So if you have been doing any study and you want to uh, go back over some of the, the questions that you're likely to get, then you could review this as many times as you like. Uh, there are 10 presentations in total. This is number one, so be sure to check in on the other presentations that cover well over 140 questions. If you do need your radio license for whether it be commercial purposes or to obtain an MMSI uh, for a DC radio, be sure to go to our website truenorthmarine.com.au or marineradio.com.au. Here we go with question one. To whom should urgency calls and messages be addressed? So the correct answer is C, to all or an individual station. So the um, handbook as shown on the right identifies that if you're using just voice transmission only, you could send in all ships. If you're using DSC, digital selective calling, then you could send uh, a message to an individual station with their MMSI number. Question two, what radio telephony priority signal should always be used before distress traffic? Two words in there stand out, priority and distress. Both those words would indicate that the correct answer would be C, mayday call. So you'd use the term mayday, mayday, mayday before the, distress, the contents of the distress message. Question three, how long should the 406 megahertz EPIRB be capable of transmitting. Again, from the handbook on the right hand side, minimum 48 hours, so A is the correct answer. Question four What is the VHF band of frequencies? So if you look on the table six on the right hand side, you'll see that all of the VHF lie within the 156, 157. 161, 165 megahertz. So they're the frequencies are used. We don't normally associate VHF uh, frequencies as such. We usually refer to them as channels, channel numbers. Um, but either way, the question is what band of uh, what, where do the bands lie? And they all lie between 30 and 300 megahertz. So D would be the correct answer. Is an individual VHF transceiver apparatus in an Australian vessel required to be licensed? Well, the answer is no. Uh, VHF radios do not need to be licensed. They're, they're licensed under what's called a, a ship station class license. So the mere fact that you have one doesn't require you to go out and apply for a license or pay any money. Um, it's just falls under that class license. You do need the license to operate the radio. That's the purpose of you being here and going through these exam questions. So yes, you do need a license to operate it, but not a license for the actual piece of equipment. If you look down the bottom of the screen, 6.6, .6, if you have an MFHF radio, a long range radio, then yes, that type of radio does need to be licensed and you would need then to have a call sign. For example, Victor Hotel, November 1234, for example. Uh, as well as your marine radio operator's license. But the answer here is B, no. Question six, which of the following frequencies is available for safety warnings from the maritime communications stations? Well, from the handbook on the right hand side, you'll see that 8291 is used for announcing safety traffic. So 8291 is one of the choices there. But that would not be the correct choice because you're giving the safety warning, um, the contents of it and broadcasting it. And that would be the interpretation of that question. And 8176 kilohertz is a uh, working frequency in the 8 megahertz band. So therefore, that would be the correct answer. Question seven. In the COSPAS SARSAT system, what type of orbit is used by LEO satellites? Uh, LEO being low earth orbiting satellites. Uh, so they're located located a thousand kilometers above the Earth's surface and they are in a polar orbit. So the answer is B. Question eight. 
in the COSPAS SARSAT system, what type of orbit is used by geosatellites. So again from the handbook, the geosatellites are in a fixed stationary orbit above the equator. So therefore A would be the correct answer. Question nine, what frequency or channels are maritime safety information messages broadcast on? So the handbook again tells you that uh, you would uh, normally make the announcement on a distress frequency and then you would transmit the contents uh, or broadcast the messages, but the contents of the message on a working frequency or channel. So D is the correct answer. Here's an example here of a safety message where the um, announcement is made, security, 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 uh, all stations, all stations, all stations. This is identification, Coast Radio Darwin, Coast Radio Darwin, Coast Radio Darwin. Then the change of frequency going from the announcement frequency to now the, uh, the working frequency for the broadcast of the contents. In this case, listen on 2201. Whose authority is the vessel's radio station placed under? Quite obvious this one, the master skipper or personal responsible for the safety of the vessel, A. Question 11, what services are provided by limited coast stations? Limited coast stations could be um, a port authority, could be a marine rescue base, um, could be a coast radio station, Brisbane, you know, coast radio Brisbane, coast radio Darwin, for example. So the correct answer would be D, and the services they all provide is communications relating to safety and movement of vessels in their area. Question 12. Initial routine calling of Sea Rescue Banff by the vessel Foxy Spirit on a VHF channel may be abbreviated to which of the following? And the handbook there at the bottom of the page uh, tells you the station being called only needs to be announced once. So in this case, Sea, Banff, sea Rescue Banff. This is Foxy Spirit twice. So on the right hand side, the name of the station calling spoken twice. On channel 16, suggest channel 73 over. So there's the correct one, uh, answer, C. Question 13, who controls the order of communications between stations and routine communication between ship stations? The station called controls the uh, order of uh, communication. So that would be B. Question 14, generally speaking, what range would you expect by a marine VHF? Well, they are known as short range or line of sight transmissions. So the answer would be D. And question 15, what is the correct phonetic spelling of the vessel name Pipe Dream? And there we have D, Papa, India, Papa, Echo, Delta, Romeo, Echo, Alpha, Mike. That is the correct answer. If you haven't done any study on the phonetic alphabet, I would highly recommend it. There will be a number of questions that come up uh, throughout examination processes relating to phonetic alphabet. You have it on the screen there. Probably won't come up on future presentations. So take a screenshot or uh, take a picture of that uh, phonetic alphabet in front of you and uh, just go over that to make sure you're familiar with it. That's all for now. Thanks for checking in and we'll see you on the next presentation. And this is Peter Wood for now. And we'll see you soon.